Hey guys, Josh from Spartan Reptiles, and uh, welcome back everyone. I'm glad you're joining us for this uh, video here. Um, as the thumbnail says on this one, we're going to talk about red exanthic and het red exanthic. Um, it is a co-dominant trait. It is not actually a recessive trait, which actually really confuses a lot of people. Um, I know I've had this discussion actually at the Spokane Reptile Expo with uh, a few people talking about the red exanthic and het red exanthic. Um, back in 2001, Corey Woods actually produced the first red exanthics by actually breeding two genetic black backs together. Um, if I remember right, he got those initially from the Snake Keeper. And uh, I believe that even Ralph Davis was working with the gene, you know, later on after Corey developed it. Um, to me, it's one of my favorite genes. I have couple of them in my in my collection. I actually have a super red exanthic and I have two pastel head red exanthics and a uh, spider head red exanthic and in this video I'll actually show you that. Um, one thing that I have noticed with the red exanthic gene is in the super form they are amazing eaters. Um, they initially come off somewhat very determined eaters. Um, I have never had a problem with the meeting. Um, not even my spider head red exanthic or even my pastel head red exanthics that I produced. And uh, I'm glad that I actually have this project in my collection. Um, Corey's done amazing things with it. If you haven't seen what Corey's done with the head red exanthic and red exanthic uh, trait, definitely go to CoreyWoodsReptiles.com and go through there and check it out. Even check out his Instagram because it's mind blowing the stuff that he's done with it. And uh, I plan on working it in some different projects, you know, as the, the future progresses here at Spartan Reptiles. So, um, one of the characteristics that uh, that the Super Het Red Exanthic has is actually a broken eye strike. <clears throat> so as the eye strike comes from the back of the head towards the eye, it does actually break up towards the nose and actually makes it give the appearance of actually having spots on its nose. Um, which actually is, I'll, I'll pull each one of my different head red exanthics and red exanthic combos that I have. Well, I only have a super red exanthic, but you'll see. And we'll actually look at that, and uh, it's really amazing. I mean, I love this gene, and I've been thinking about making this video for some time, so let's go ahead and do it. So what I have here is my Mel Pastel Het Red Exanthic. Just a simple two gene combination, Het Red Exanthic and Pastel. And as you can tell, it does give a little bit of different coloration in the head. Also, the eye stripe is more of a cream color. Very, very interesting, uh, in my opinion. Um, with the Het Red Exanthic, it doesn't have the broken eye stripe, so it does not have the appearance of the spots on the nose, which we'll look at with the Super Het Red Exanthic. Um, a lot of blushing going on the dorsal with this particular combination. And uh, I have noticed that the Het Red Exanthic is a little more, little more pattern dominant. Um, everybody knows that pastels kind of have a crazy whacked out pattern sometimes, or most of the time. Um, and as you can see here, basically what the Het Red Exanthic does to it is lighten up the background, and it really, really highlights right around the pattern. So as you can follow right through here, you can just see it. And uh, I mean, to me, it's a beautiful, beautiful combination. And then this one actually sired uh, two pastel het red exanthics and two spider het red, red exanthics this year that uh, I produced in the 2019 season. And here is actually the only female pastel het red exanthic that I have left out of that uh, clutch in which the male that I just previously showed you sired. And as you can see, I mean, it looks just like, looks just like Dad. A little more vibrant as a hatchling. Um, as they do age, they do kind of fade a little bit in color. Um, a beautiful, beautiful animal, though. And uh, 
when this this one here and her sister were both hatched out, uh, which I'll actually drop a picture here. As you can see in that picture I just dropped in there, you can see why Corey, when he was initially working with it, thought it was an exantic trait. Um, is it? it? I guess it could be, you know, depending on what colors it takes out, but it is definitely not a recessive trait. It is a codominant trait, and uh, I mean, it is just beautiful. So I'll give you a little more of a video clip of her. And here is the spider head red exanthic. The contrast on the colors are just amazing in this combination. Very, 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 very beautiful in my opinion. Uh, the contrast between the side pattern and then its background colors, just, I mean, super amazing. Uh, the one thing I really love about the spider head red exanthic is this head stamp. It really, really creates a really nice head stamp. Look at that head stamp. Ain't that amazing? And even the combination kind of, if you look at her head, if you follow the eye pattern, it almost gives her kind of like a clown appearance, even though there's no clown in there. But all in all, I mean, this is just a beautiful combination. And uh, all in all, I was actually able to produce two of these and two pastel het red exanthics. Just missing on the bumblebee het red exanthic, that was my main goal. And then this here is the Super Red Exantic. It has a very, very whacked out pattern. All along the sides, a lot of blushing. Real nice blushed out head. And this is what we're talking about and what uh, is one trait that you can look for when you're producing a Red Exantic combo. See that eye stripe? Okay, so the Super Red Exantic's not cooperating with the camera, so what I will try to do is do it this way. If you look at the nose stripe, if I can get him in camera, he just doesn't want to be on camera today. You're not cooperating, you know that? You're really, you're being really very inappropriate. You're not being a nice snake. But anyways, as you can see right there, right up towards the front, how the eye stripe breaks up and gives it the appearance of having two dots on its head. That's one of the characteristics you can look for. Also, it does influence color and pattern. And in many different combinations, it does many, many different things. But this is your typical super red exanthic. Does have kind of a crazy belly pattern. Not, you know, nothing like the confusion gene or nothing, but in its own right, beautiful belly. Um, I have noticed color changes on them when they're first born. Uh, you know, they were born with like, you know, like a typical exanthic. They look uh, black and silver. And they, they do cut, end up eventually, you know, the background color actually changes to like a almost a red and then the pattern turns cream colored the cream color does seem to stay on the head and the eye stripe throughout its entirety so far that i've noticed and this guy's just a little bit over two years old but there's your super red exanthic so there's a little bit of a description of uh you know the red exanthic head red exanthic genes and again, like I said, if you haven't looked and seen what Corey Woods has done with it, definitely go to CoreyWoodsReptile.com. Um, he has a, a, a lot of good information on his website about the Red Exanthic. 
what he noticed of it as far as their characteristics after producing them. Um, also their behavior patterns. Uh, Ralph Davis actually has a little bit of information on them as well on his website. And uh, I mean, I look forward to working with this gene a lot more. Um, like I said, this year, 2019, I did produce uh, two pastel hit red exantics and two spider hit red, red exantics. Um, and both of those spider hit red exantics are spoken for. One's already gone and been purchased and picked up. The other one's actually just waiting for its owner to notify me when they're ready to get it. Um, and uh, I mean, I look forward to doing more with this project and uh, actually have some ideas for that super uh, red exantic as far as breeding projects for 2020, which that'll be a whole nother video so you can check it out. Um, I did miss on the project that I was actually trying to go for this year. Uh, I was going for the Bumblebee Hit Red Exantic and I just missed it. But like I said, all in all, good odds. I got two Spider Hit Red Exantics and two Pastel Hit Red Exantics. And, uh, you know, I've had a lot of people, you know, ask questions about them and uh, really were interested in them and just, you know, and that, you know, made me want to make this video. Um, also, what made me want to make this video is actually a conversation that I had with a group of peers um, in the PAC Northwest, and we were talking about the red exantic gene and the het red exantic, and uh, there was some confusion on whether it was co-dominant or a uh, recessive trait. Um, so I hope this helps. Um, um, I just wanted to make this video and bring it out to everybody. Um, a little bit about this morph and uh, you know just keep an eye on our channel and uh, we are in the progress of making a website and uh, hopefully next year we'll have some uh, red exantic and super red exantic stuff out there um, or at red exantic and super red exantic stuff out there um, like I said I do have some breeding plans using the het red and super red exantic combos in my breeding projects for 2020 and uh, there will be a video on that um, coming up so I want to thank you guys for checking in and uh, actually on my Facebook page I actually am uh, doing a uh, fundraising campaign for uh, Samuel Jeffers Childhood Cancer Foundation so uh, if you want to go to that go to my website or not my website but my Facebook page um, you can go to either Josh Baker or you can go to the Spartan Reptile page and uh, it'll be posted on there. You can click on the link down there below. Also on our uh, Spartan Reptiles page, we do have a link to our Teespring store uh, where we do got some new merch up there as well. Um, check it out. If you guys buy some, we greatly appreciate it. Um, and uh, also we will have a link on there as well for the Samuel Jeffers Childhood Cancer Foundation t-shirts as well, which is also on our store. 100% of the proceeds for those t-shirts go directly to the foundation. We don't even touch the money whatsoever. It goes, you buy a shirt, it goes into a pot, and then after the campaign's over, it is actually sent to uh, John Jeffers over at the, at the foundation and it is directly deposited into their account. So, help uh, cook up a cure for childhood cancer. I actually got my Childhood Cancer Foundation bracelet on, and I wear it all the time. Um, but uh, go ahead and let's bring this video to a close. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope to help you understand that a little, the, this particular gene a little bit more. And uh, as always, keep on herping.